morning and a warm welcome to Canal Side Benefice. To those of you who are gathered here in this building and to all of you who are worshipping from home. My name is Claire and I'm sharing this service with Jill today. I hope you have your order of service sheet and some bread. There will be a point in the service where the bread is broken, blessed and taken if so wished. And for those of you at home, you may like to pause this video and gather these things for the service. And if you prefer, the words will also appear on the screen. And please join in with the bold print. A reminder that sadly we still can't raise this roof with our singing. And I know that's quite a challenge not to join in. But when we get home, we can be as loud as we like, so feel free. Let us hold a moment of quiet as we begin our worship. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, O God, that we have risen this day to the rising of this life itself. Be the purpose of God between us and each purpose. between us and each pain. The love of Christ between us and each love. O God, who brought us the bright light of this new day, bring us, us to the guiding light of eternity. And so we listen together to our first worship song, All Heaven Declares. The valleys and the hills, the rivers and the lakes, 
all to serve your presence. The roaring breakers of the sea tell of your awesome might. The beasts of the field and the birds of the air proclaim your wondrous will. In your goodness, you have made us able to hear the music of the world. The voices of the loved ones reveal to us that you are in our midst. A divine song sing to all creation. Amen. We now have a time to remember before God and each other those things we would like to say sorry for and ask for forgiveness. My brothers and sisters, not out of dread and fear, but believing that God is faithful to forgive, let us rid ourselves of what we need to carry no longer. We say to God, we turn to God, maker of the stars above, though we Christ, all the mists of growing earth, spirit of life, wind of the flowing waters, in earth, sea and sky, you are there. Although hidden mystery, sun behind all suns, soul behind all souls, in everything we touch, in everyone we meet, your presence is around us and we be with us. When we have not touched but trampled your creation, when we have not met but miss you and one another, when we have not received, but rejected you in the call, forgive us and deliver our healing offenses. Hear now the words of Jesus for all who are truly sorry and seek to renew their lives. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Come and follow him. Leave us now, O God, to acknowledge your costly generosity by living as forgiven people until heaven and earth rejoice and the whole earth Christ's glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayer with the comment, the special prayer for today. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's time to listen to some more worship music now. And praise God in our hearts for our listening. Lord, I come to you by the power of God's love.
I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, pleading again, Lord, help me. Jesus responded, It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, That's true, Lord, but even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Dear woman, Jesus said to her, Your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Saying that he believes that his 
mission is first to Israel, the Jews, and then to the Gentiles. For he says, I was sent only to the lost house of Israel. And he goes further to justify this by using such shocking language. We could alternatively say that Jesus was just being provocative to draw out the woman's faith and show to others that his mission is wider than just to the Jews. What we can hear is a life-changing conversation. The woman who is challenged to Jesus is saying that he's discriminating against her as a Gentile. He doesn't dismiss her, he listens to her. Why wouldn't God respond to her needs as well as others? He listens to her and responds. A miracle takes place when the woman's daughter is healed. That's what she requests. And that's what takes place. Jesus responds to her need. It's difficult for this woman of Gentile origin to approach a Jewish teacher for help. But she overcomes that barrier. What makes her do this? She is motivated by her love for her daughter. That's what gives her the boldness to approach Jesus in such a demanding way. Her love for her child enables her to cross all kinds of boundaries, gender, culture, religion, ethnicity. Barriers are broken down and it is shown that everyone matters. Jesus breaks down barriers between people, between countries and cultures. And we see this time and again in the scriptures, in the Gospels. Here we see Jesus' eyes being opened again to her Plea, her request. She makes Jesus see the reality of her situation. She places it before him. And of course, Jesus responds in an open and inclusive way. And we see this being the emergence of the wide English mission to include the Gentiles. This encounter and exchange with the woman points to the future where Gentiles were more equally included. But it also highlights the barriers which can exist between people and how easily these barriers can be preserved. We can so easily erect barriers, can't we? Sometimes in self-defence, as a form of protection. Sometimes because we can't understand difference and so don't know how to respect people with different views to us. This new climate that we're living through has taught us so many different things. We've had to understand things from a different view and a different perspective. The pandemic has made us recognise how valuable the NHS is, what sterling work they do, and the importance of key workers, like the refuse collectors and the supermarket assistants. The horrific treatment of George Floyd which led to his death. Highlighted again that black lives matter, that no one should be discriminated against. It has shown that all lives matter. Sometimes it takes something shocking, something challenging to make us aware of where our blind spots are, where we need to rethink. It can be so easy to continue with what we've always believed or always thought and not to question. This story encourages us to be bold, to be questioning, to be honest with God. This story encourages us to overcome barriers and to be open to new ways. We're all on a journey of discovery every day of our lives. There are new things to experience, new discoveries to be made, and this is through our inquiring and searching and questioning. Don't ever be afraid to ask questions. You may have questions about God, about life, about the Christian faith. Bring your questions to God. Jesus will listen to you as he did to the Gentile woman. And I wonder what your conversation will be like. What you will find or discover. 
It's been a real joy to be part of the Zoom app that's been taking place in this benefice. And it's exciting. We have an opportunity to ask questions and we have some fascinating conversations together. Every conversation we have has an impact, has an influence, affects us. Some conversations make us think. Some make us laugh. Some make us cross. Some are enjoyable. Some conversations are life-giving. And some conversations are life-changing. What about the conversations you have where someone encourages you to step out in faith? Go on, you can do it. Or, I can see that gift in you. Sometimes, though, it takes more than one person to make us think and walk briefly. I remember it took five people for me to hear my call to order in history, which meant several conversations, I can tell you. And it took several conversations with God and others to bring me into my current role in the Diocese of Buckland Wells, encouraging lay ministries. I'm so glad to have had those conversations, because these conversations have changed the course of my life. I'm sure we can all think of life-changing conversations that we've had, all life-giving ones that we've endured. I had some great conversations last week with our grandchildren. And what about the conversations we have with our friends? There are conversations taking place about how to move forward from this pandemic, global, national and local. People talk about the new normal, as things cannot go back to how they were. What about here at Canal Side? We've been finding new ways, adapting to the challenge. And look how creative we've been through our conversations. Online services and Zoom Alpha and even an online auction is taking place in this environment. And now we are able to be partially back in our church buildings we are having conversations to how this can be managed safely and well. It's teamwork. Together with God, we can find a new way and all of us are needed. So, let's listen and let's talk. You may have heard it said, careless talk costs lives. But I'd like to say that constructive conversations change lives. Or, Thoughtful talking transforms lives. Let's listen to what God might be asking us to say, share, or wanting us to do. Don't keep quiet when you feel that nudge to speak that word of encouragement to someone. Let's all engage in life-giving conversations. And some of these may even be life-changing ones. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may like to stand or remain seated for our affirmation of faith as we share together what it means to be a Christian. We believe in God and others, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God and science, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born and born, servant to the poor, tortured and made to the fear. A man of sorrows has acquainted with grief. He died for the burden of the city. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day, he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be led in our presence throughout all the ages, and his kingdom will come. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit, burning with Pentecostal fire, life giving breath of the church, spirit of being and forgiveness, source of 
In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Let us keep silence for a moment as we invite him to speak into our hearts. Come, Lord Jesus, come and enlighten the darkness of our hearts. Give us right faith, certain hope, and perfect love, that everything we do may be in fulfilment of your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. God, our healer, whose mercy is like a refining fire, touch our church with your judgment and confront us with your tenderness that being comforted by you we may reach out to this troubled world. Enable us to grow in service to others in our faith and in our numbers. In our diocesan cycle of prayer today, we are asked to pray for the benefits of Queen Thorn and for David Bond, its rector. Please, Lord, continue to strengthen that community after lockdown. And we pray too for Trent Young's primary school in Queen's Thorn. In the wider church, we pray today for the Scottish Episcopal Church and for its primus, Mark Strange, the Bishop of Moray, Ross and Caithness. And we give thanks too that our diocesan appeal for your church in the Sudan has more than reached its target. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local schools thinking particularly of Stavarton School and of its need for a new head. We await expectantly, Lord, for you to send the right person to take up this job. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring before you, O oh Lord, the troubles and perils peoples and nations, thinking particularly today of the people of Beirut, of Belarus, and of Kadubli Diocese. We ask, Lord, that the needs of the bereaved, the injured, the homeless, the refugees, and the starving might be met. O oh Lord, draw near to them. Make them aware of your presence with them. Make them aware of your love for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. In these unprecedented times, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick, and to assure the isolated of your love. We pray particularly today for all those on our prayer list and for others whom we may name in our hearts. Give them a firm trust in your goodness. Help those who minister to them and bring us all with them into the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. We praise you, Lord God, for your faithful servants in every age, and particularly for those whose memories we bear in our hearts. Thinking particularly today of Pat Rees, who passed away yesterday at the Gloucestershire Royal Hospital. We pray for John and for Simon and for all the family that they may be comforted. And we pray too for the family and friends of Art Hamby following his funeral at the crematorium on Thursday. And we pray that we, with all who have died in the faith of Christ, may be brought to a joyful resurrection and the fulfilment of your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and each other to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Humanitarian Day on Wednesday. And as we hold this day and all days across the world in our prayers, we also remember the 75th anniversary of the Play Day. And there is a special prayer for this commemoration. So we continue in prayer. God our Father, in the dying and rising of your Son Jesus Christ, you have brought life and salvation out of cruelty and death. We mark victory in Japan in gratitude for the courage of the Allied forces who suffered for freedom in the Far East campaign, and in sorrow for all that hinders the coming of your kingdom of peace. Give us wisdom to learn from the bitter memories of war, and hearts that long for the unity of all nations. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, in whom there is no peace or rest, no north or south, but one fellowship of love across the whole earth. Amen. Amen. And how appropriate that we now share the peace with one another. And in this building, please, a wave or a smile. I'm afraid you can't do handshakes or hugs unless you're in your own little bubble and at home. Very welcome to do your handshakes and hugs in your bubbles. So please stand and listen to me. Not an easy piece, not an insignificant piece, not a half hearted piece, but the peace of God in Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Thank you. 
the table of bread and wine is now ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all you love him. It is the table of sharing with the poor of the world, with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth, in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often, and you who have not been for a while. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. We pray together. Loving God, through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands has made. May we know your presence in the sharing of this bread, so that we may know your touch in all bread, in all matters. We celebrate the life that Jesus has shared among his community through the centuries and shared with us now. Made one in Christ and one with each other, we offer these gifts and with them ourselves a single, holy, living sacrifice. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We offer you praise, dear God, with hearts lifted high. For in the communion of your love, Christ comes close to us, and we come close to Christ. Therefore, with the whole realm of nature around us, with earth, sea, and sky, we sing to you in our hearts. With the angels of light who envelop us, with all the saints before and beside us, with brothers and sisters east and west, we sing to you. And with our loved ones, separate from us now, who yet in this mystery are close to us. We join in the song of your unending greatness, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. is our brother Jesus, who walks with us on the road of our world's suffering, and who is known to us in the breaking of bread. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread and having blessed it, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body given to you. In the same way, he took wine, and having given thanks for it, he poured it out and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, This cup is a new relationship with God, sealed with my blood. Take this and share it. I shall drink wine with you next in the coming kingdom of God. If you would like to, please raise your bread. Hear us, 
us, O Christ, and breathe your Spirit upon us and upon this bread. May this become for us your body, vibrant with your life, healing, renewing, and making us whole. And for those who are not receiving you sacramentally, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Amen. Let us join in the prayer which Jesus taught his disciples and unites the whole Christian family. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. He whose table was open to all is now present with us. He whose word welcomed friend and stranger offers friendship to all. With people everywhere, we affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply than all of us know. Let us remember Jesus through the breast and in our hearts. Thanks be to God. We say together the post-communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your life into our hands. Now we put our lives into yours. Take us, renew us, and remake us. What we have been is past. What we shall be through you still awaits us. Amen. And our final worship song. Be thou my vision. Oh 
focus begins to open its doors for Sunday worship next week. And we many thanks for those who worked so hard to make this happen. Please book through Michael so we can arrange safe seating. And details of how to do that is also online. Joy is calling all budding photographers to please send her photos reflecting harvest in the ventures. Up to you how that how you picture harvest in the ventures, but she'd love to receive your photos. Her email is online. And please see details there for revised opening time for personal prayer in the churches and for Zoom details for coffee and communion. A special thank you to Michael for keeping us all up to date so brilliantly. And many thanks to everyone who has helped to lead the service today and to James and Michael the Tech and all who work behind the scenes to ensure that we can worship safely. And now we close our time of worship with a Celtic prayer and blessing. Deep peace of the running wave to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace of the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the sun of peace to you. And may the blessing of the God of life be ours. The blessing of the loving Christ be ours. The blessing of the Holy Spirit be ours. To cherish us. To help us. To make us holy. Amen. We conclude with this dismissal sentence to encourage us to go out into our community, into uh, the next week with hope in our hearts. From where we are to where you need us, Jesus, Jesus now needs us. Let's get it on top of